What's up, guys? Matty D back with Week 7 wide receiver cornerback matchups. Let's touch on Week 6 really fast, but Week 6 was was an ugly week all the way around. Uh, there weren't very many high-scoring games, so not a lot, not a ton of wide receiver production in Week 6. Uh, T. Higgins, Rondale Moore, Michael Pittman were our plays last week, and Hunter Renfro was our, our sit uh, of the week. T. Higgins, only three catches for 44 yards. Rondale Moore, only three catches for 16 yards. And Michael Pittman, only two catches for 35 yards. Not a great week out of the start. Like I said, there was a lot of low-scoring games across the league last week, and it just wasn't a good week for wide receiver. And our set of the week, he did was much in line with, with our starts of the week, three catches for 36 yards. Definitely wasn't a good week for wide receiver in week six, but I think there are some uh, bounce-back spots that we can look for wide receivers in week seven. It starts with Jalen Waddle for me uh, in a, in a pace-up game with the Atlanta Falcons against the Miami Dolphins. Uh, in two games so far with Tua being healthy this year, Jalen Waddle's averaging nine and a half targets a game. He's getting 26% of the targets, 24% of the air yards, and over 80 air yards per game. Uh, he is going to be facing off with a fifth-round draft pick out of Boise State against the Atlanta Falcons, and the Falcons are allowing the 10th most fantasy points to wide receivers. This, Like I said, this should be a pace-up spot here. Miami rank, ranks 12th in pace of play in neutral games, game scripts, and Atlanta ranks 7th. So look for both teams to push, push the pace, and both teams like to throw the football. The next wide receiver we're on this week is Darnell Mooney. In four games so far with Justin Fields, he's averaging six targets a game. He's actually leading the team with 29% of the targets and getting 33% of the air yards. Uh, in this game, you know, against Tampa Bay, who is a pass funnel defense, we're finally, hopefully, going to see Justin Fields have to throw the football a lot this game. They've been able to rely on the running game the last few games uh, in games they've played ahead or in one-score games. Uh, a lot like last week to Green Bay, that game was never out of hand, and and Khalil Herbert had success on the ground all game long, so they were able to continuously rely on him, but that should not be the case here against the toughest run defense in the NFL in Tampa Bay. So for Chicago to have success, they're going to have to throw the football. In terms of a specific cornerback matchup, he will face off with D. Delaney. Uh, due to injuries, Delaney is one of their, their backup corners uh, who's allowing an 80% catch rate. 13 yards per catch, two touchdowns, and a 151 passer rating. Uh, look for Darnell Mooney to, to have a couple deep shots to him here, and I think that the Bears' offense should be able to have some success in the pass game against a, a leaky Bucks secondary. Then the third the third start of the week is, is a little bit on the cheap side in terms of uh, calling this man a wide receiver two or wide receiver three, but that's kind of what he's been this year so far, and, and we're just here to talk about how good – he possibly can be and maybe a buy low target for you for the rest of the season. And that is DeAndre Hopkins. Over the last two games, he's got 107 air yards per game. He's getting 23% of the targets and 46% of the air yards. It's also noteworthy that the Texans play sides and they do not have their cornerbacks travel. This is a big deal because DeAndre Hopkins mainly lines up on the left side of the field and he's going to be matched up with Vernon Hargraves, who is one of the worst cornerbacks in the NFL. Uh, he has never had a season where he allowed under a 100 passer rating. And this year specifically, he's allowing a 73% catch rate, 16 yards per catch, one touchdown, and a 108 passer rating. So if you're eyeing trading for DeAndre Hopkins, uh, you need to do it now before this game is played because we could be looking at a 150-yard two-touchdown game from DeAndre Hopkins. So make sure you're starting him this week. And then lastly, the sit of the week is Henry Ruggs. Uh, Ruggs has had some, some big games this year, and that's just going to be his MO. He's going to have some bust games, and he's going to have some big games. Uh, he had a, a solid game last week where he caught a over 50-yard touchdown pass. But facing the Eagles secondary this week, the Eagles are designed to play a two-high safety scheme uh, where they allow a ton of production underneath two running backs, which is why they rank are one of the worst-ranking run defenses in the NFL. Uh, they allow teams to run the ball, and they allow short passes to the middle of the field. That's the, just the style of defense that Philly plays, and they prevent everything deep. Henry Ruggs is a deep target, and it is also noteworthy that the Eagles do not play hardly any man coverage. Uh, their, their man coverage checks in under 10% this year, and Ruggs versus man coverage it has a 3.8 yards per route run, and that drops all the way to a 1.7 yards per route run against zone coverage. Uh, so like I mentioned, Eagles play a ton of zone, not a good matchup here for Ruggs. And on top of that, Ruggs should mainly be matched up with Darius Slay, who has been a shutdown corner pretty much for the majority of this year, uh, allowing only eight yard 
eight yards per catch and an 80 passer rating. So that'll do it for week seven. Uh, we're looking for a big bounce back week here. We've had a couple of down weeks, but started the week off hot, the year off hot with, with Debo Samuel, 190 yards uh, and, and two touchdowns in that opening week. So let's bounce back and maybe DeAndre Hopkins can, can approach that Debo Samuel production. Uh, if you're not in the Discord, make sure you click the link, join the Discord, and I will see you in the Discord, and good luck in Week 7.